got time for one more question. So, so, so I'm just I'm interested actually in, in the other uh, experiments that you're doing with FMX. Mm -hmm. um, if you could explain if there's any more you can talk about, and, and I'm interested in with those evolving models how you go about uh, selling them or monetizing them. <laughs> Um, with great, great difficulty <laughs> is the answer to your latter question. Uh, okay, let me give you an example of, it's more, I suppose, an example of how we work inside this cell. So we're not allowed really, we're not allowed, we, we, we were constituted, FMX was constituted around not experimenting with existing television brands. Yeah, we're not, the other parts of the company take American Idol online or take prices right to mobile games with Ludia or whatever, it's, whatever it is to be. Um, we have, uh, two years ago, I did a small pilot project called um, Project V, which you can still find online and probably on YouTube. And, and, and Project V was really, really an experiment. We took, I wanted to see whether it was possible to improve the quality of user-generated content by getting professionals to do it and training them just enough to use to use the material, uh, to use the technology to allow them to film themselves and to see what happened if we brought them be to, together at the beginning but we didn't ever tell them what story they were supposed to be telling but they had to produce a little video blog every day. Yeah, that was the kind of challenge. So we brought together a group from America and from the US who were a mixture of cabaret performers, stand-up comics, uh, an actress from the States, um, uh, a performance artist, a British performance artist, who's, who's a sort of prankster called Richard de Dominici, um, a mixture of people. We introduced them to each other, we had a kind of workshop, we trained them to use the equipment, basic editing equipment, and they produced a film every day. And over time, they started to abstract their personas into characters in a kind of little drama. Now, not a terribly strong one, but it was there. And they started to develop little storylines that they passed from one to the other, and I would, um, you can see them online. So there's the, the great classic moment of the gold swimming cap. So in one of the films, Ruth, Ruth Pickett, who's a British, a British cabaret artist and general eccentric, these are all people kind of under 25. Ruth Pickett's seen online, she films herself with her webcam, and she's on eBay, and she's bidding for a gold swimming cap, right? She gets very excited, and then at the last minute, some other person comes in, and they get the gold swimming cap. And she gets very annoyed, and that's the end of the clip. And the next day, um, the actress in the US made her clip. She put it online, and it was her talking about how much she hated washing up. She just happens to be wearing the swimming cap. <laughs> in the, as this narrative then unfolded, the narrative of the swimming cap, it started to interact with the real world. So Richard de Dominici sent his aunt, well, his aunt was going to Los Angeles, and he suggested to his aunt that, he, that she meet the actress. And she did meet the actress in her house, and she filmed herself stealing the swimming cap and <laughs> taking it back to England. All right, so, so this very small, not particularly brilliant narrative started to evolve around the, the transferring swimming cap. And if you watch Project V online, you can see you know, there's a song and dance routine featuring the gold swimming cap, all these little elements. This, this model of, of blurring the boundaries between real people and performers, and of interacting in real time around narratives that are very sketchily outlined, is something that FMX has taken a lot further. So we have a project which we're um, quite well, we were quite far with, a bro with, a, with an entity until the broadcaster that owns them tried to take all the television rights in this thing. With a, with a project called Parentshood, which, is, which takes five performers who are going to be parents during the course of the next 11 weeks, and they blog about their life, about the birth of their children. They evolve a relationship with each other, but the, the story arcs are written by professional writers, but they improvise the dialogue and the connections between them, and they also respond to real-time interaction. We're using that model and experimenting with it in various ways. We're in production at the moment with something called Freak, for MySpace, which is about um, a, a, a kind of adolescent girl who has an online persona as a male gamer until she falls in love with one of the people she plays against online. And then she has this dilemma of how does she, how does she embrace, um, how does she embrace, as it were, I don't want to address it, especially not with Sarah here, uh, how does she embrace her evolving, um, her uh, growing sense of herself as a woman in, in this very male arena of gaming without sacrificing her position. Yeah? Great. 
Actually, you know, unfortunately, we've got to end it there. But thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very late in the discussion.